Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of On The Mark. I'm your host, Mark Brantley. It is 8 o'clock, and so it's time for us to get the show started. Good evening to you, all of you who are here in Nevis, those in St. Kitts, those in the wider Caribbean. Good evening to those in the United States and Canada, those across the pond in the United Kingdom. I want to send uh, special greetings to those in the UK. I know people like my good sister, Jackie, and the entire family that usually listen. Uh, I know if Mems, you're listening, sending greetings from Mems to you. She didn't tell me to tell you, but she always sends greetings. Anyway, uh, those of you in Atlanta, like my dear friend Ursula and the family, good evening to you. And uh, I wish all a very good evening. We hope to have a good show tonight. Uh, if you see me, I'm wearing a sweater. That's because Nevis is so cold. Many are predicting that it's going to snow soon. I know that those of you who are living in North America think that that's funny, but it's not funny to us who are here. You know, at home, people are looking for blanket. In fact, a young man told me today he's thinking about getting married. So difficult is the period at nights that he's so cold. And so that's a good thing. It looks like the churches are going to get some activity as people try to get married to get some warmth at nights. And that's important. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of On The Mark. I'm here, and we have some very important issues to discuss tonight. But before I get there, let me start by expressing my very deep condolences uh, to my family members uh, all across the world, but more specifically to the children of my aunt, uh, Onnit Berry. We lost her after a valiant battle that she had for some years, and she passed away um, a few days ago uh, in the United States. And I, she was uh, somebody who listened to this show regularly. She was somebody who loved me unconditionally. She loved her children unconditionally. She loved everybody around her. And she was the most generous soul, somebody who cared for people. And uh, while she was a very private individual, I know that she helped so many, including myself, including my family. Uh, when we were growing up in Brown Hill, I well remember the days when the barrels and the, 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 the boxes used to come from the Virgin Islands. Uh, as she lived there and she took care of us and I just want to say to her children um, to to Joanne to Eddie to Fime to Tony uh, to say to her grandchildren uh, that I extend my very deepest condolences to them They're my cousins and close family members we are very close-knit and I think it was a huge loss for all of us when we lost uh, on it or Auntie Baby D, as we used to call her. I think a lot of people here know as Baby D. She hailed from Hanley's Road originally, but of course would have spent most of her life abroad and has now been called home. And so I want uh, the whole of Nevis and those who are listening, those in the Virgin Islands, those in the United States and elsewhere who knew her, uh, all her good friends. I know she had people like Molly and his wife who were very close to her. Um, you know, Lloydy, Lloydy, I hope you're listening and you're doing okay. And the whole family, you know, my brother Trevor, and, and the, the entire family, we were all very, very close. And we loved her unconditionally, as she loved us unconditionally. We have lost a beautiful soul. And from Sharon and myself and my children, Brianna and Gabriella, from all of us here at VON Radio, and I think as Premier of Nevis, I can extend condolences on behalf of the whole of Nevis. We would want to extend our deepest condolences on the passing of Onnit Berry. Auntie Babidi, as we knew her, she has passed on, and we extend our deepest condolences. May the prayers of the many comfort us all in our hour of bereavement, and may we hold fast to the memories that she would have left us with, the good times, the laughter, the infectious laughter that she had. She was such a beautiful woman, and so I would really want to extend condolences. And to her siblings, whom she leaves behind, my mother, of course, has gone before her, but she leaves behind other siblings I would want to extend condolences to Joe, Joe Berry, Joe Imo, uh, to my Auntie Pat in the UK, and to her brothers, Junie and Thomas, and her sister, Helen. I want to extend condolences to them as well. Uh, we, the whole Berry family, in fact, in St. Kitts, who are related to her as well, my condolences to all. May God bless us, and may God keep us, and may God comfort us in our time of difficulty. We have truly, truly lost a phenomenal woman, and she will be missed by us all. I know not yet when the funeral arrangements will be, but we look forward, whenever that is, to being there with the family and, it, and, and praying with them and staying with them and supporting them and ensuring that they understand 
that their mother was loved, their sister was loved, their grandma was loved, and in my case, my aunt was loved. And so on behalf of us all, we extend deepest condolences to the family of Ornett Berry. If I can move from that sad note, ladies and gentlemen, let me move to a note of celebration. I was sent a beautiful uh, WhatsApp message which said that I should extend both the greetings in advance to Dorothy Huggins from there in church ground. Dorothy is known by us all and loved by us all. But Dorothy is celebrating a huge milestone. She'll be 90 years old on Friday. And uh, we're sending you greetings, Dorothy, from all of your children and grandchildren, all of the church ground community. In fact, the whole of Nevis. I remember you were very close to my mom. And uh, you always used to you call me to this day, Vicky Boy. That's what you called me. And I love you. We all love you. And we send you birthday greetings. It will be 90 years old on Friday. And I'm sure all the children and grandchildren and everybody else will be celebrating with you. Let me also extend those greetings to you from Sandra Prentice. Because she was the person who sent me that beautiful WhatsApp message. And I know that the whole Prentice family would also want to join, as well as all of church going to join in wishing you a very happy birthday on Friday. And then today, we had uh, my good cousin, my good cousin, Lisa Brown. Uh, oh, let me say it correctly, Alicia. Alicia Brown would have celebrated her birthday today. And I just want to say, again, happy birthday, Lisa. I wish you all the very best. I try to stay on your good side because I know your mouth don't have no back door at all. So, Alicia Brown, Alicia Brown, <laughs> Lisa, I want to say happy birthday to you coming from the entire family and all of us here at Von Radio. We wish you all the very best. Ladies and gentlemen, it is just 10 past the hour. I have some very important issues to discuss and I'll be actually bear with me as I try to get into them. The first issue that I want to discuss and to put on the table is that the Nevis Island administration has been the unfortunate victim of a cyber attack and uh, it is the first time that we are aware that this has happened but we have had what is referred to as ransomware where individuals hack our system seek to control it and then demand a ransom in order to give us back our data i can't get into too many details except to say that our team has been responding valiantly to this it, we have already put out a press release to indicate what the issue is, and we will continue to keep the public updated. But this is an unprecedented situation for us. And uh, we are aware, because we see it on the news of organizations being attacked by those who are bent on criminality and who steal your money hiding behind a computer screen. Well, they have now come at the Nevis Island government. I would want to publicly express my thanks to the Honorable Troy Leibard, who has been leading from the ministerial level the response, but also to thank Mr. Craig David, who is a brilliant, brilliant computer whiz, I call him. Uh, he has been leading our effort from IT. He has indicated to me that he has reached out to professionals uh, whom he knows, including, of course, our own Quincy Prentice, who is the head of IT at National Bank. And, of course, we've also been reaching out to uh, Dion Herbert, who is uh, an IT professional with Microsoft. And uh, we are hopeful that through our outreach to these technical persons uh, and others that we have found some solutions and we will slowly be restoring as best as we can the system that has been compromised. It, it does appear based on the advice that we've taken in the report comprehensively presented to the cabinet today that we will lose some data that does appear to be unavoidable but we have been advised that the technicians that we have and the experts that we have available to us that they have been responding admirably and that we are hopeful that slowly our systems will be brought back online slowly our email and all of those functions will be brought back online and in the interim while we have had some disruption to government services i am asking for the patience of the public the patience also of our public servants many of whom now are unable to send or receive emails this ladies and gentlemen is now the way of the world these are the difficulties that governments and organizations face 
And someone said to me today, well, don't you all have everything backed up in terms of paper? And the truth is that more and more we are told that we should become paperless. We hear a lot about e-government. Everybody says that we should become entirely electronic. In fact, in some countries of the world, we have a situation where they operate uh, just on a card. And on that single card, they have all of their data, medical data, financial data, all kinds of data. And uh, that really, ladies and gentlemen, is the difficulty with the solution. The difficulty with the solution. Because clearly, transforming ourselves to a digital economy and ensuring that government is now e-government and that we all have all that we do um, is entirely electronic, is entirely online, it sounds wonderful. And the idea that with a click of a mouse you can pay all of your bills, you can, you know, do your banking, it all sounds wonderful. The idea that it, it enhances the speed and the ease of doing business, it is designed and computers were designed for us and all these applications were designed to allow us a better quality of life, allow us to do things easily. I was someplace recently and uh, to purchase something that tell me all I need to do is just tap my credit card. I don't even have to put it in a machine anymore. Just tap it. There's a chip and the money is deducted. And more and more, we are moving towards this digital world. Many countries of the world are already there. And we are seeking to play catch up to get there as well. But when these cyber attacks come, they demonstrate that even solutions with the best intentions can have vulnerabilities that really take us back to the dark ages because suddenly we don't have the paper backup that we would like or, or we used to i'm sorry because we're saving on paper and that is now outdated and outmoded we are not able to do basic services because we're so dependent now on the internet and connectivity and so it begs the question how do we better protect our infrastructure, our IT infrastructure? And that really is the situation now that we're faced with because the criminal element is out there and they're looking for vulnerabilities and they replace the gun with now the click of the mouse. They are experts at computers and today I, I, I marvel to myself at the expertise that we have right here in Nevis, but I equally marveled to myself at the lack of expertise that we have in the cabinet in terms of somebody even the terminology person like myself couldn't quite understand it is a new world and this new world is faced with new challenges new opportunities to be sure but new challenges as well and so we are fighting a noble fight i believe we will win that fight they are demanding large sums of money from the nia we clearly don't have that money to pay in fact, if I were them, I would have gone and hacked somebody who could afford to pay them because we're not in that position. We're doing the best that we can to get pay our public servants and to pay our debts. We're not looking for new payments to make. But, regrettably, that is where we find ourselves, a very serious situation. And one that warns us that these are battles that we will have to fight going forward where sometimes the foes and the criminals are unknown. In fact, sometimes it's difficult to find them. I asked the team, well, where did this come from? And they have so many mechanisms available to them to, to, to hide their identity and hide even the country that they're operating from that one can never quite be sure. But again, I believe that in the vision people, we are never ones to shy away from difficulty or back down in the face of adversity. We will stand, we will fight, we will do what we can. And we are grateful that we have people with the competence and ability of Craig David and his entire team at a time like this, when the government and people, by extension, have come under attack. For those of you who are out there, the companies, the various entities, I'm asking you, even in your home systems, to get some additional security to see what you can do electronically to protect your data, protect your information, protect your phones, protect this, these devices, because all of us are now connected. 
And once they get into your device, they get into all of your information, your credit card information, your banking information, and they can, with a few clicks, wipe out all that you would have had. And so I am always optimistic that from every bad situation, some good can come. I think we are learning now some lessons about how we can better secure the NIA. And I believe that the IT department, which does an excellent job, will do even more going forward. It will cost us some money because we have to invest in new software, new technology, new servers and the like. But at the end of the day, it is something that we simply have to do. But I just wanted to say that to the public because this has been going on all over the weekend, past weekend. The people at IT have been working very hard to try to salvage what we can and restore what we can. But it has been a very difficult few days. And the cabinet today was consumed with this issue and in terms of what we can do to respond. So I wanted to say that at the outset. And of course, when the lines are open, if there are individuals who would like to call and express a view in relation to that, there may be people out there with expertise who can help our IT department, I would welcome that. But certainly, I wanted to report that to you. Just to advise as well that I have, which I think is my duty, reported the matter to the Prime Minister so that he's aware. But he kindly offered assistance. But so far, our IT folk have had the resources available to them to try their very best to resolve this malicious attack on our IT infrastructure on the island of Nevis. This is a first that I'm aware of at this scale. But certainly, we don't anticipate that it will be the last. And lest others who are listening think that they're immune, the government in St. Kitts, Antigua, you name it, they too have to be careful that this does not happen to them and that people's information can be compromised in this way. Ladies and gentlemen, let me segue from that. But before I segue from that, let me say one other thing. You recall that the NRP, the Nevis Reformation Party, was recently making a huge hullabaloo about some airport deal that they allege has been made. I have spoken about the airport in a number of press conferences that I've had, and I have them every month. But it appears that when you say these things, they fall on deaf ears, and it is far better to build a story. When we were small, we used to call them Anansi stories, but to create a story that better suits whatever agenda some might have. But the NRP had this big song and dance about some deal and the terms of a deal, and they claim it had been published in some newspaper or some publication in Europe. I think most of you would have seen the NRP making reference. In fact, the leader of the NRP, Dr. Janice, the Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, would have written to me referencing some article and asking me for information. I responded, of course, as I would often do, respectfully, but to say to her that we had no agreement in place. We are having negotiations, and once those negotiations were complete, and I had something to report, I would report. But at my press conference, the last one, the matter did arise, and I took an opportunity to explain as much as I could without compromising the delicate stage of the negotiations at which we are. But I find it interesting that we have now had this hack. And I use it just to point out that this is now a universal phenomenon. Because it turns out that the article purportedly written about this airport deal, and it was quite clear that the object was not so much Nevis, but to get at Mr. Drahi, Mr. Patrick Drahi, who is a, an investor who has invested significantly in Nevis and who is someone we are speaking to about partnering with us in a public-private partnership on the development of the Vance Amory International Airport. But what was interesting is that we later learned that Mr. Jahi's company, an entity called Altis, had been hacked. Same situation, where hackers would have gone in and uh, took his data and sought to demand ransom, and apparently then released that data and that data included reference to the ongoing negotiations here in Nevis in relation to the Vance Amory Airport. And so that article on which the NRP was seeking to rely was the result of 
information stolen from Mr. Drahi's company and leaked to the public. And then that information found its way into an article. I said that just to say sometimes how there is a remarkable coincidence, let me put it that way, of circumstances. Where just recently we had that incident where hackers would have hacked the company of this gentleman, stolen his information. That information then found its way into various articles, including one which spoke to the negotiations on the Nevis airport and what we were seeking to do to develop that airport. Negotiations which have not yet been completed. But that article then spurred the NRP to have march and to do all manner of things. And for the leader to write to me demanding information. And then, short while after, here we are, the NIA being hacked again by people demanding ransom and saying if they don't get it, they're going to put our data out there to the world. I say that, ladies and gentlemen, to point out that this now appears to be the way of the world. It is unfortunate. It is regrettable. But so long as we have humans and humans have a brain in their heads, there are some who will use that brain for good. And there are others who will seek to use that brain for bad. And that is the choice that we all have, good or bad, good or evil. And as human beings, God has given us that choice. And it is a choice exercised by some one way or the other. And regrettably, this phenomenon of hacking and invading people's IT systems, trying to invade people's phones and try to get information from people to then be used for nefarious purposes. This is exactly what Mr. Drahi's company experienced and this is what we are now experiencing here in the NIA as well a few weeks later. I leave that there and I move on. Let me report on the election petitions because I think as the world knows, Nevis would have had elections here on the 12th of December, 2022. In those elections, the NRP would have retained the St. Thomas's seat by some 204 votes and the NRP would have narrowly won the St. James's seat by eight votes. The CCM would have retained the seat in Gingerland by a handsome margin, I think it was over 400. They would have retained the seat in St. John's by a good margin, 147. And they would have retained the seat in St. Paul's Charlestown by a good margin of 27. I say good because the last time it was only 11. So the result was that the CCM won three seats, the NRP won two. The CCM had gone into the election with four seats and was looking for five. It came out of the election with three seats and the NRP two. It means, therefore, that the CCM again forms the government to govern the island of Nevis for the next five years. Now, the election was hard fought. The results surprised many, including me. But the results are what they are. And I've always said that the voice of the people is the voice of God. And we must respect the results when they come. Provided, of course, that the results were as a result of free and fair elections. It was therefore a matter of some surprise that having gone through that election on the 12th, that we started to hear all kinds of allegations, allegations of fraud and corruption and thief in election and all of this coming from the NRP. Mark you, the seat that was most narrowly won is the St. James seat, eight votes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. The Honorable Alexis Jeffers said that he was aware of quite a significant amount of impropriety that occurred in St. James on election day. And I asked Alexis Jeffers, what do you wish to do? Do you wish us to challenge? And he said no. He said the CCM has retained the government and I am prepared to continue my work on behalf of the people of Nevis. And that was that. 
And so notwithstanding, that was only eight votes. We have left that matter there. We have congratulated the Honorable Janice Daniel Hodge, and we have moved on. The NRP, on the other hand, doesn't appear to have the capacity to move on. And so, they have come with the wildest allegations in the public space. They have said all kinds of things. In fact, I must confess that I was looking forward to the filing of their petition because I wanted to see what their allegations were. Because out there and on social media, they were making all kinds of noises, saying and alleging all manner of things. And I said, well, I'm interested in seeing what is being alleged. And so having painted myself, Spencer Brand, and the entire CCM team as scoundrels, we look forward to these petitions. But when they arrived, the petitions really said nothing at all about CCM or about us. In my petition, Patricia Bartlett said that my name was Mark Brantley, that I was a contestant, a candidate in the election, and that I was declared the winner. Three things she said about me. In J.D. Keynes' petition against the Honorable Spencer Brand, she said his name is Spencer Brand. He contested the election, and he won. Three things about Spencer. No allegations about us at all. All right. Were the allegations against the CCM as a party? CCM was not mentioned, except to say that Spencer and I were candidates for CCM. So, no allegations. Then there was a huge hullabaloo about 16 ballots that were found in the ballot box. And when they looked at the tally, those 16 appeared to be 16 extra ballots. Big hullabaloo. One would have thought, therefore, that there would have been a huge to-do about that in the petition. Not a word. No mention of the 16 ballots. Because, you see, NRP understood, once it was explained, what the issue was. Mere clerical error, nothing else. And so, one by one, one would have thought that these scandalous allegations being made out in the public space would have found their way into the petition. None of them have. All right. Dr. Bartlett would have gone to the law firm of Hector and Nisbet, Nisbet and Hector, whatever they're called. Patrice Nisbet, Roberto Hector, let me call him by his right name, El Hansville Hector. I think they fell a smarty, um, what's smarty's name now? Eustace Nisbet. They are all at that firm. And that was the firm of choice. We know they're NRP activists and former politicians and all now in retirement. But they're still practicing as lawyers, they're in political retirement. And so she would have gone to them, and I recall she posted a photo that I saw of her signing her petition. And there was a huge applause that Dr. Pat had filed a petition. And so I wanted to see what the petition said. They filed a petition on the 6th of January, but they never served it on me until my birthday, the 11th of January. No problem. That was my gift from my cousin Pat. But the petition arrived and I looked through it and I had to laugh. Because as somebody who's a lawyer of long standing myself, I believe them fellows have a song where they say they see money coming. There's such a thing you see called costs. And I said, this looked like it could be some good costs to me. Because the petition said nothing. No allegations of fraud. No allegations of any illegality or impropriety. None whatsoever. And here I tell you say about me. My name Mark. Candidate. Winner. That's it. Only thing you say about CCM. Mark was a candidate for CCM. That's it. So neither myself nor my party were implicated in anything. And all that they focused on is said they made 151 objections. And that Mr. Foy, 
the registration officer did not hear all of the objections by the time the election came on the 12th of December. Now, those election petition, those election objections, I'm sorry, those objections to persons on the voters list were done back in January of 2022. Pat Bartlett and the NRP waited for a year until the 12th of December to say they make a noise that those objections were not all heard. But what I find is interesting is that August 5th, 2022, there was a federal election on the same voters list. Will August come before December? And so the objections that they had filed in January had not been heard by August or had not been concluded by August and therefore the very people that they now complain about were on the list in August. NRP went to the polls in August in the federal election. They lost all three seats. They never raised any objection or any problem. Five months later, there's an election in December. And this time around, a big hullabaloo that the very list and the persons on that list in August that something is wrong. And so they've gone after Mr. Foy. And I have said here that I have known Mr. Foy all my life. I consider him to be an honorable man. Never heard anything said of him that was untoward. And all my dealings with him, he has been honorable. But here it is, they have now gone after him. Say so he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Then they said that people who were registered in October and November, a few people, I think it was 30, 31 or so persons, that those persons should have been on the list for the December 12th election. And then, this 151 persons who they say should not have been on the list because they objected. That, was, that is the case that they brought. And these people should not have been on the list because they objected. They then went on to say, finally, that some persons were successfully objected to, but those persons still appeared on the list. A small number. But when we started to comb through now, we find in the 151 objections that they made, some persons there had died. Some persons had not only already transferred to new polling divisions in Nevis, but actually voted. Like there were some voters, for example, who used to live in St. John's, they had moved to Gingerland. And they changed their vote to Gingerland and voted in the last election in Gingerland. But yet, Pat down here saying, oh, they want the voters this in St. John's, and that would have affected the outcome. Well, how could that affect the outcome when they vote in Gingerland, where they're properly registered? So you had all this hullabaloo. Now, Election petitions are technical matters. They have their own rules. And the courts have been pellucid over the years as to how election petitions should go. One, it gives you a time frame to bring a petition. It says within 21 days. Two, it tells you how to count time. How do you arrive at that 21 days? Three, it says there must be something called a notice of presentation of the petition. Four, it says there must be something called a recognizance. Providing security. And the law is clear as to when things have to be done. And what has to be done to constitute a perfected petition. If you just go into court as they did. And file this petition without more. No notice, no recognizance. Then the petition is not a perfected petition. If you then go days or weeks later and file a notice, days or weeks later and file your recognizance, and you don't serve them within the time prescribed by law, you don't file them by the time prescribed by law, you don't serve them within the time prescribed by law, again, the petition is not perfected. If you were to file within 21 days and you filed outside 21 days, the petition is bad as a matter of law. 
And the cases are plain. I don't have my brief with me. But if I had my grip, I would have opened my grip and take note a few cases. The same argument about hearings not being concluded. That argument was made in a case in St. Kitts involving Lindsey Grant and Glenn Ghost Phillip. And the court was pellucid in its view that those matters are not for an election petition. The same matters went to the court in Dominica. When the party in Dominica in opposition lost, they took Roosevelt Skerritt and the Dominica Labour Party to court. And they said the same things. These objections were not dealt with by the time the election came about. The court said, go sit down. Go sit down. That is not a proper matter for an election petition. And so we did the only thing that we could do. We decided that we're going to take NRP out of the misery early and save the people of Nevis all the drama and the uncertainty. Investors want to invest. Everybody saying, oh, well, things murky now. We don't know what's going to happen. So we said, listen, let us apply to strike out these bad petitions. J.D. Kane's petition is so bad, J.D. said that some people there, their names were on the list and they were not allowed to vote. And that is an irregularity that should cause the court to set aside the election of Mr. Brown. The only problem is when you look at the name, you say, goodness gracious, this person has passed. I said passed, I mean deceased. That person is deceased. So you have some people who are at the cemetery. And J.D. telling the court they should have had the chance to vote. And because they were not given the chance to vote, that is an irregularity that rises to a level that Mr. Brand's election should be set aside. Abject, arrant, absolute nonsense. And so we decided that we will apply to strike out these petitions. But it's not just me who applied to strike out. Spencer applied to strike out. But all the other respondents have now applied to strike out the Attorney General. He said, no man, these petitions here are stripping it. Rubbish. The Solicitor General. The Electoral Commission. In my, in Mr. Rohan Claxton. All of them have applied to strike out. Mr. Foy. And the law and the facts are on our side. There's nothing wrong with the election. NRP did better than they thought they would do. They did better than, they, than we thought they would do. But they lost at the end of the day. Simple. But they want to prolong this notion that something is wrong, something is wrong, something went wrong. And as I said, I looked very carefully in the petitions to determine well, what is it they're saying that went wrong. Can't find anything. Except a barrage of criticism of Mr. Foy, the hearing officer, the registration officer. That's who they went after. So, all the respondents have come to one conclusion that these petitions are bad in law. They weren't filed in time, they weren't served in time, they weren't perfected in time. And in any event, they disclosed no cause of action known to petitions and this procedure which could cause the overturn of an election. No. All of a sudden I hear the NRP now with some story. Hear the story. What technicality they're trying to rely on. Let the people have the case heard in the court. They shouldn't be relying on any technicality and any strike out. They should let the matter go to trial. You mean let the matter go to trial? If an animal is so badly wounded that you know the animal cannot be saved. What's the word called? Euthanasia? Euthanize? They put down the animal. So these petitions are so bad they cannot be saved. They have to be put down. And the only way you put them down to save costs and 
save judicial time and prevent the court from having to deal with foolishness is you apply to strike. That's what you do. It's not about technicality. Because if you want to avoid technicality, the first thing you do is hire good lawyers who know the law and understand the procedure as it relates to petitions. Because I kept wondering, well, what, what are they waiting for? Since the night of the elections, they say all of these things happen. What are they waiting for? 21 days. And you let the 21 days pass. And then you say you're putting in something after that. And then you tell people, don't rely on a technicality. It is not a technicality when the law is plain that the petition, unless it is filed and served within the requisite time, is bad. It is no good. That's not a technicality. Unless it is perfected. With the notice of presentation and the recognizance, it is bad. That is not a technicality. And you cannot come in a petition to argue about voters and objections when you had a whole year to do that and did not do it. Because the case lies clear. Those of you out there who are legal luminaries and those who are doing A-level law, go on the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court website and look for the case of Lindsey Grant and then goes Philip. It deals with it. Go to Dominica and look at the petitions I think they were filed either the 2019 election I, I suspect it was. Look for it. That went all the way to the Court of Appeal. Because the court outlines clearly what are election offenses that should form part of an election petition if it is to, if it is to be successful. You don't just fling things against the wall. That may work out here in the court of public opinion. You may get NRP people out here talking about election teeth and all kind of foolishness. But in a court, a court is trained and a judge is trained to pick sense from nonsense to separate the wheat and the chaff. You can't fool the judge. So now you have locked battle. All of a sudden, now they're out there. A lot of technicality. If the lawyers had done their job, there shouldn't have been any technicality, you know. Because if Pat had come to me, a good, good cousin, and said, Cuz, give me some legal advice. And I said, Pat, you are now a retiree collecting your pension and your social security. Go sit down. You not got no case. If JD had come and said, Give me some advice, Mr. Brantley. I said, J.D., try again in five years. Because there's no case here. Nothing is here. Try again in five years. But they rush in there. J.D. have this some lawyer. Um, what the lady name? Mrs. Cozier. None of them have any experience with election petitions, which are peculiar. Ladies and gentlemen, I practiced as a lawyer for many years. And I considered myself a good lawyer. But if anybody ever came to me with a murder trial, I would tell them, no, no, no. Go look for Dr. Henry Brown or one of these people because they're the experts in that, not me. You must know where your limitations are. And not try to be jack of all trades. Because election petitions are peculiar matters. If you have no experience in them, leave them alone. Leave them alone. You can't be a general practitioner and decide you're going to do brain surgery or heart surgery. That's beyond you. Leave that alone. And that is the difficulty that they have now. And rather than confronting why they find themselves in that difficulty, they start to say, oh, we shouldn't rely on no technicality. The matter must be allowed to go to court and let the people hear. Let the people hear what? There's nothing to hear. Because if there was something to hear, your lawyers would have put in place a proper petition to go before the court with proper evidence that we could say there's a contest here, there's a case to answer. And so we attended a hearing on Monday via Zoom. I felt so good I was back in the courtroom, even though I was there virtually. And the judge made certain orders and said what had to be done. And the hearings now for a determination of the strikeout applications will be on the 15th of February, the day after Valentine's. 
So on the 15th of February, we will know what the position is. The, the judge may take some time to deliver his judgment, but we may know whether or not these petitions are going to be allowed to go forward to a trial or whether the judge will conclude, as we have argued, that the petitions are incurably bad and therefore have to be struck out. But what I liked about the proceedings as I listened, because I have a right to be there, of course, I'm the second defendant, I think, in my petition. What I liked about it is when the judge asks the lawyers, tell me about costs. How much you all think would be appropriate for this matter? So that I can address my mind to the question. Lord of mercy, I start a clap. I start a clap, I said, I like the sound of that. Because we must understand that when we drag people under the clock foolishly, that costs and a cost award could be the consequence. And Pat, you're my cousin and I love you dearly. But if the judge say you got to pay me money, I want me money. I just want you to understand that. Because had you called me up as your good family and asked me what to do, I would tell you to go sit down. But you playing braggadocious. Right? If I have a problem up there right now with, with, with my, 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 my beautiful dog that I love, I'm going to call Pat and I say, Pat, this is your area of expertise. Guide me. What do you think I should do? Well, my area is law. So Pat should have called me and say, Mark, what do you think I should do? Cause? And I would have said, Pat, go sit down. Because if you're going there, and them lawyers you got down there, El Hansville and Smarty in them, right? Them lead you down the wrong road. Pat, it's going to cost you. Now, maybe you got a lot of money. I don't know. But I know I don't have much. And up to today, I look at a long list of election bills that Lord of Mercy, they're still coming in. And I said, well, if you got money to spend, no problem. So I say in it plain, that if the judge say, you got to pay a little something, I want my little something because I got use for it. Because you could have called me and I would have told you, Pat, go sit down. But you didn't call me. You decide you're going to listen to other people who are not your family like me, who don't care about you like me. And see now where we are. The judge said the 15th of February, the day after Valentine's. So, we're going to wait and see how that goes. Now, while that battle has been going on in the court, there's a battle out here now in the public. Same NRP again, front and center. Lord, I so like what is happening because for the first time in a long time, they've not got no time to cost me as much. A couple of them have tried to pull me into their fracker, into their World Wrestling Federation WrestleMania, but I have nothing to do with it and I have stayed out of it. Now, the election was since the 12th of December. That means the election was nearly two months past. Two days the 1st of February. Pure confusion since then. The leader, the Honorable Janice Daniel Hodge, she finally broke her silence because she had weeks of silence. She finally broke it and went on some radio station, I'm told, in Sinkits. One thing with them, they don't come on radio stations in Nevis. She went on radio station in Sinkits. And apparently she tried to paint a picture that all was well. There was no problem. No problem at all. All is quiet on the home front. The Honorable Cleone Stapleton Simmons, the deputy leader, she, I'm told, went on some program, regional program, today or sometime like that. And both of them are talking. Now, Cleone said today that she will support Janice as leader of the opposition. She's not fighting for no leader of the opposition. In fact, I saw a quote attributed to her which said, only losers fight for leader of opposition. Winners should be fighting to get in government. So I smiled. And she said she's willing to support Janice for leader of the opposition. The problem that they're having has to do with the senator. 
because Janice done asked about 10 people to be senator. She asked a young fella there from St. James. One. She asked the fella there, Hector. Two. She asked the lawyer lady. Three. Who else she asked? Man, they're going to come back to me. But I believe she asked about 10 people already. Two young men, I gather, from St. James, she asked. So, she asked many people. Apparently, Cleon only asked for one. And that is X-Ray. Young Bartlett. And that is where the Hullabaloo now start. Janice say, I am the boss, I am in charge. I am the leader, I will be leader of the opposition, and I will choose the senator. Cleon said, Tal. I am the deputy, I win my seat by more votes than you. You just have come. You only manage eight, me win by 204, me in the longer than you. And by sides, all of us know how you get the leadership. All of us know how the thing was rigged up to fix you getting the leadership to keep me out. So, I am not supporting you unless I could get x-ray. And Cleon hasn't been skipping around. Cleon has been holding fast to x-ray. Janice said no. So, the question is now what's going to happen? Because I see the NRP stalwarts and activists have turned on the deputy leader like a, oh my goodness gracious, like a pack of hungry hounds tearing her limb from limb. They even the chairman, Hensley Daniel, Lord Hensley teach me in high school, you know, that means Hensley. Hensley pretty close to the tree, school and ten. Have to be. And hen up still around in them hard kick and stab shoe and some hard, hard starch up gabardine pants. A talk about him politics. He said he go sit down and go rest himself. He is the chairman of NRP and send letter via bailiff. Are you hear me say? High court bailiff gonna go look for Cleon. Lord have mercy. High court bailiff gone to look for Cleon with a letter from her own party giving her, I am told, an ultimatum. Cleon must be laugh at him. All this while, Jan is quiet like a church mouse. And now she comes, she's telling sensible people, there's no problem, nothing, nothing is wrong, no problem, no problem. Today, Cleone is saying, people must learn patience and just be patient. I mean, just be patient. When you get letter from Bailiff, that Hensley, Daniel, who has the dubious distinction of the only politician in the history of Nevis declared null and void. Got the gall to send the deputy leader and elected member for the good people of St. Thomas's a letter via bailiff. That's what they do. And all of them cussing, voice note cussing, Facebook cussing. Kick you out of the party cussing and them say all is well. How can all could be well? And all of them think they're happening. And that's why the people need this, you know, look on the other side. Look on the other side. You know what you see? You see the blue ocean liner. That is Team CCM. Not a noise. Not a fuss. Good, steady, decent leadership. Good, steady team members. Everybody playing their role. Understanding that we have to play our role. If we're going to move the party. And move the island of Nevis forward. We don't have no time for all of this foolishness. All of this rural. All of this sound and fury. All this chaos and confusion. And I pee up and down all the time. I talk about change. So they want change. They never tell the people of Nevis. A confusion they want to change Nevis to change and may tell you all tonight you know that the two who are fighting still to my mind easier to deal with than those who lost you know take it from me 
easier to deal with than those who lost. So I say that to say, could you imagine how the problem could have been compounded? If they were in government and one say, I am going north, says the leader. Cleon said, not me and you. J.D. said, who? Tal, I going east. And my good cousin Pat, where you know Pat. Pat said, we may not move at all. So one gone north, one gone east. One gone west and one see them now move. What do you think will happen? But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the result of when people are not in politics for the right reasons. Janice came into politics to ensure that Cleon did not get leadership of NRP. I have said it over and over, but sometimes when I talk, I refuse to listen to me. And from then, there was that bad blood between them. Because Cleo knows what was done. And why it was done. And so now, that Cleo is holding the handle. And Janice needs Cleo's support in order for her to become leader of the opposition. And to have the power to direct the governor general in terms of appointing a senator. Cleo said, no. You can't have it all. You can't have the whole cake. You must only get half the cake and I will take the other half. And that is what is playing out. So now they're seeking to say, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, this is just democracy. Oh, these are small matters. Small matters. Small matters. When the hardcore NRP are out there going after and some who just come to NRP from CCM, them going on worse than NRP people. Those that CCM threw overboard, I don't tell I, you know. I don't tell I. You have a good captain in Mark. Mark Branty look at the team. He said, no. Them team members here, them bringing down the team. He put them over there in a rubber dinghy, tell them go about the business. Because they were seeking to undermine the blue machine that was cruising on the ocean. Put them in a dinghy. NRP out in an old tugboat taking on water. Here NRP, come, 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 come. And not only take them onto the tugboat, but NRP put them up in the captain's quarters. Until them now start to feel like they're my captain too. That is what has happened here in Evers, believe it or not. And I am looking on and all I'm saying is that the people of Nevis are seeing what we had been saying. But sometimes when we talk, people say just politics and me support, me side, and fine. But you can now see that the persons who presented themselves as a change that Nevis needed, they're not ready yet. They're not ready. They couldn't even captain a canoe. Put by run this island of Nevis. I think running Nevis is easy. You think running this island is easy? The challenges that arise. Here I started the program tonight talking about the cyber attack. He just went through two years of COVID. Steady, sober, sensible leadership is what the island needs at all times with the realization that we serve people, not ourselves. So there's no room self-aggrandizement there's no room to engage in this power hungry tussle and engage for title who gonna get leader the opposition who gonna get the right to appoint senator when all that is going on what about the people of Nevis what about the people who voted for you are they taking into account are they even relevant to this power struggle that we see going on? And that is why I thank God every day that this change that some were championing, it never happened and it's never going to happen because this has shown, you know how many people have called me to say, boy, I never realized I was prepared to give them a chance because I was in there a long time but I never realized 
that them just not ready. And they have not the people of Nevis at heart. It's all about self. All about self. Who gonna get what title? Who gonna have what power? Who gonna have what position? And one is not prepared to yield to the next, and the next is not prepared to, prepared to yield to the one, because that is their makeup. And that is the reality of what we face. Let me end my soliloquy by congratulating the Honorable Marcella Liburd, who has ascended to the post of Governor General of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. She makes history by becoming the first female during our period of independence to hold that position. And I want to commend her wholeheartedly. She now holds that position. And the Deputy Governor General is also a female in Hailita Library who holds that position in Nevis. And so the head of state constitutionally in our country is now a female, the Honorable Master Lai. But I've known Master for a long time. She is a woman of incredible fortitude. In fact, she and I used to have some epic clashes in the parliament when she was an elected member for Labour. And I was in opposition and later in government, and she was on the opposition benches at some point. We went to law school together in Jamaica. We would have gone to UWE together. And I know Marcella well. And I think she has the tenacity. She has the awareness of people and the love of people that she will do well in this role. And so my friend Marcella, notwithstanding our past political differences, congratulations. I wish you a successful tenure as head of state of St. Kitts and Nevis. You have made history. And for that, you should be proud. Your family should be proud. And indeed, all of us should be proud. I will say about this Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew, that he has clearly made it a point to elevate women, whether it's in the Cabinet, Parliament, and now as Head of State. And so kudos to you, Marcella. Congratulations. While I'm extending congratulations, because I don't think I did so before, on the opening of our Parliament here in Nevis, we had Michelle Slack, a young lawyer, who was asked to serve as the President of the Nevis Island Assembly. And so the head of parliament now, the person who controls the parliament now in Nevis, like in St. Kitts, where the speaker is a woman, the deputy speaker in St. Kitts is a woman, the president of the house in Nevis is a woman, the clerk of the house in Nevis is a woman, the clerk of the house in St. Kitts is a woman. And we now have the governor general of St. Kitts and Nevis is a woman, the deputy governor general of Nevis is a woman. Women are doing great things, and so it should be, and so it must continue to be. Praise be to God. Let's open the lines now. We have 55 minutes. We take as many calls as we possibly can. The numbers are 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. Let's go straight to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello? Okay. Is that caller there? Caller, you're on the mark. Go ahead. Good evening, Dr. Sheriff. Good evening to you. And how are you doing tonight? I am well, thank you. Okay. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am the God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand. Of my righteousness. Mm -hmm. Sympathy is going out to all who lose their loved ones. May God continue to bless all of us. Good night. Mark, I want a piece of polyester cloud to make us cure. Polyester gabardine. Gabardine, gabardine. <laughs> I want a piece to make us cure. <laughs> well, as you say, gabardine. I wanna, I when you go back, I want a pair of shoes to a black one with the pointed. Kick and stab? Yeah, kick and stab shoe. Size 8. <laughs> All right. Okay, good night. Good night, my dear. Good night, good night, good night. Let's stick with the phones. We're taking, we're taking orders for Gabardine. Claude Hensley, if you're listening, the lady says she wants some Gabardine. 
and she want a pair kick and stab. I don't believe she want them for free. So send the details and she could go and buy them. I don't know where you shop, whether it's Value Mart, Rams, Food Savers. I don't know where you get them things that you know where from, but the lady is asking for you. My advice to you, politics done with you. Even you don't want to done with politics, go sit down. I now get into the point where I want to go sit down. And you still go and talk where you're saying bailiff letter to people. Hence the way you do them kind of things, man. Don't do them kind of things. Take it easy. Relax yourself. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Mark, good evening. This is Dupont. Good evening, my brother. Your radio show is the only platform where I can say something in this country. So just give me a couple minutes. Sure. I was, my heart felt real bad when I heard you spoke about the problems with the attack on the Nevis Island um, administration. And I hope you all will get that fixed. That is why I don't believe in the gadgets of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about computer and YouTube and Facebook and WhatsApp. I can't even text. So I feel it. Now, Mark, one of the reasons why I count you a lot as a politician, and I'm going to continue to pray to God for you, is because you bring a lot of wisdom and knowledge to this country. Now, I'm a Bible reader. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7.12, For wisdom is for a protection, the same as money is for a protection. But the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom itself preserves alive its owners. If those young women, those intelligent women in Nevis, who are having problem over the who to lead and hensley writing letter and sending it the way you say he send it. If they, if they were really thoughtful, they would have solved that problem within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Knowing, Mark, you educate me. I'm older than you, but I sit here on Wednesdays and listen to you at home alone. And you educate me. Now, you spoke a while ago of the elevation of women. Congratulations to Marcella Leibert. I love her to my heart. Mm -hmm. We have had big problems in our life fighting over different things. But Marcella is the type of person you could fight with her with words, but you could still have a drink with her. We need more of those. I am quite disappointed tonight, Mark, to hear you speak the way you spoke on the matters that go into the court. And I'm so sorry for these young women of NRP because I really, having heard that they want the to see it, I wish them well and hope they'll do good. But the question on my mind here all the time, I was just having dinner while I listened to you. What if they had won the election, all women? What would have happened to Nevis? I want the people in Nevis to just think about that. I have nothing against them. A matter of fact, I don't know them. But Nevis people, We'll see the difference now between your party and the NRP. Mark, let me tell you this. Thank you for staying on in politics because sometimes when I lay down in my bed, I got a feeling that you got good judgment when to pack up. But please don't pack up yet because I want you to be around me still to guide them. I sat down here in my living room last night late put on ZIZ and I didn't know about the chicken business all you're doing over there because I don't follow certain things no more. I try to be alone and pray more to God and consider my life more. I had a lot more things to say but I want to be as brief as possible. Let me move on to something else quickly Mark. To the young people of St. Kitts Nevis. I, Carlton, Elroy, Emmanuel, Rastafari without locks DuPont, want to give them some good advice from the Bible. Be careful what you do with your money. Make sure of the more important things in your life that is said by Philippians 1.10 in the Bible. Pay your bills. When you work, save money. Don't squeeze off. Don't got big Valentine set and you can't afford it. Save your money. And Mark, because I want to give somebody else a chance, last thing, last thing, the people in St. Kitts and Nevis who are married and live in a good family life, I want all the people in the Federation, when they observe those families, 
to encourage them to stay with the family. Because one of the greatest disaster that has struck the world is the lack of family togetherness. So I want to say thanks to all the people in St. Kitts Nevis and the wider world, those who are keeping their families together. Ma, I believe you and your wife doing a good job too. And may God continue to bless you. Ma, have a good evening. I wouldn't call back because I want to give everybody a chance. I'll continue to listen. Peace and love to you, brother. All right, my brother. And thank you. And you're always welcome on the show because whenever you call, you're clear, you're oh. concise. And I believe I told you I was in the Virgin Islands and somebody down there told me that they love you in the Virgin Islands and they love to get up early in the morning. They said they used to get up to listen to you. I even tried calling you so the person could say hello, but I didn't get you. But I have delivered their message to you. So, brother DuPont, thank you very much for that. And I appreciate your call as always. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Oh, you know, good night, Mr. Bradley. Yeah, could you move away from the computer or the radio that you have on? Because we're getting the feedback. Okay, good night. Yes, good night. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I, I listened to you a while ago. I came in the house and I hear you talking about um, the present situation with um, the young NRP um, party. And I, I believe that um, the people who have voted for them now are very embarrassed. And I and I believe also Mr. Jeffers feel embarrassed too, the way things turn out. I mean, how 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 people like those could would want to lead such a country as as Nevis? That's all I have to say. Well, thank you very much, um, caller, for your, your, your point of view. Um, I think the whole situation is acutely embarrassing. I agree with you. And no amount of pretense is going to change that reality that the NRP is having a full-blown war. And that is happening in full public view. And so the efforts now to try to use language and say well this is just democracy and all of that no i think as the previous caller pointed out these are matters that should be resolved internally without the bloodletting and public calls and criticisms that have come is almost every day there's some voice note or whatsapp messages going around that have been sent and it looks to me like there is an effort publicly and one of the things that i've pointed out is at the end of the day, Cleon Stapleton Simmons would have won the St. Thomas's seat for the second time. I had a candidate whom I wanted to win. The CCM did. But we did not prevail. She won the election. She won that seat. And when I look at the attacks that have come, I ask myself the question, why has the leader of the party not said to the attack Homes within her party. Stop it. Stop it. All of you going on radio and Facebook and whatever, creating greater problems, stop it. Let us sit down internally and resolve this. Why would she have allowed Hensley Daniel to get a bailiff from the high court to deliver a letter to her deputy? That is the kind of thing. And when I talk about leadership, and what leadership should look like and sound like. These are the things that we have to point out. But that's, you see, what happens when people just jump on this thing about change. I commented publicly the other day that the NRP ran an election on December 12th and the NRP never issued a manifesto. They never issued anything to the people of Nevis to say, these are our ideas if you elect us. If anybody out there has a document that they can share with me, I'll come back next week and apologize. Because I never saw it. So there was no blueprint, no roadmap, no set of commitments that would have been made to the people of Nevis. 
They came with slogans. Time for change. Get rid of them. Get them out of office. Better days are coming. And people jump up and say, yes, change, change. Well, now you see. Now you see. Not anything to do with us in the CCM. We are going about our business. Calm and quiet and united. Now you see the confusion. The chaos. This like, I'm going to date myself now, but it's like Hulk Hogan and Dusty Rhodes and them. My mother, blessed memory, used to like wrestling. All she had used to swell up when wrestling on. Because I don't know what happened to she, but she ponging and boxing and, you know, drop kick and all kind of thing. WrestleMania, that's what you're seeing in full view of the public. Where well, are you going to come back from that? And it's a failure of leadership. I said it here last week and I'm going to keep saying it. A failure of leadership. Because you should be able to say to these elements that are bent on attacking. Listen, that does not help. Back off. Stop it. If you can't do that. Why? Because they're attacking Cleon today. Well, what happens when they turn on you? Life is funny, you know. He had some of them in sync. He used to attack me all the time but say they are members of Team Unity. Where are they now? Where are they now? And that is what is important. When you're a leader, you must lead. You must be able to stand up. You must be able to tell the mob sometimes, go sit down, take it easy. That is not the way. But when you're not accustomed to even captain in a canoe, you're going to run party. You think that's how things go? How are you going to run the island? That's how things go. It's a failure of leadership. Because what we are seeing here is public spectacle. This chaos and confusion should never have happened in this way. Somebody's holding. Let's go back to the phones and say hello. Good evening. You're on the mark. We've lost that caller. Anybody else is there? Let's try someone else. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hear that call. Callers, we're asking you to call back in. If you're using a mobile, sometimes we have that problem. But the numbers are 469-1616 and 469-1700. Let's try again. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hey, Mark. What's up? Red Cap here. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? Are you by here, you know, hanging I, in there? I, I, know, I know you all are busy at RLB, so I say you're making so much money, you don't have time for me now. <laughs> my name is so, man. You know, man, you know, I can't lift you up, but you know, you're my partner from way back. Yes, brother. How are you? Well, yeah, yeah. But, Mark, the problem I have, somebody asked me today, why this lady being treated this way? Why? Mm hmm I mean, this lady would have been there for a while, but then it just is a clear indication that these people really just in for their own political game. I mean, these people actually, you know, cheat this lady like that with this barely story. I mean, Mark, I mean, what, what is that? It shows that they, they have such a lot of fighting in their own party. And then they mechanize about all kind of silly things. But they need to clean up their, their, their yards first before they come out. I mean, I don't think that these people, me personally, ready for politics. I don't think that they're ready for politics, as you're saying. I think they need to start to clean up the yard first and then start to come out and see if the people will um, accept them. But I believe from this kind of blow, with how they cheat their own, I think that's a real, um, I think that the people of Nevis will see directly that these people are not supposed to be trusted. They're not ready yet for politics. Well, you see it? Well, but uh, I believe you raise an important issue. Um, because one of the things, for example, when you have well-known party supporters mm -hmm. have come out publicly and attacked the deputy leader, mm. an elected representative for the people of St. Thomas's, in the way that they have done, and the leader has not admonished them mm. or said to them that they should stop, well, how do you mend that fence now? How do you go back now? How do they do? What are they all them going to do? Come back on Facebook and say they're sorry? <laughs> you know, it, it is, as I said, the thing has become an embarrassment. And I could only reflect on the stalwarts of NRP and say, well, they couldn't have dealt with this matter this way. You know, every part you will hear little grumblings and grumblings here and there, but this has been a full-blown public spectacle. You know, P 
people on social media, people on radio, people send their own voice note, WhatsApp message. All manner of things have been said. And when Humpty Dumpty fall off the wall, so what are you going to do? <laughs> so I don't understand what it is these people are about. And I keep telling the people of Nevis, <laughs> this is what happens when you get carried away on this talk about change, change, and you don't figure out. And you don't understand what the change is going to do for you. Okay. But Mac. Yes. The other problem I have. This, this girl was a girl who they was trying up in the air all the time. She was throwing up in the air all the time. So how come all of a sudden now she's the worst thing? Because that's the way they're acting from the time you're going to take a, um, you're going to get a bailiff to get a person later in your own party. Mm-hmm. To show you. That, that is serious, you know. That alone is a serious statement. It's whatever they did, you know. It show you directly that they don't really care about nobody. Because if they could treat somebody in their party that way, what to say about the, uh, uh, the, the, the normal civilians on the street, here and there, who have not done anything, who just there? These people cannot be trusted. People got this a message, you know, and these people need to take that as a serious message, you know. A serious message that should never be elected in Nevis. If people was wondering, of them and, and, and what's not and so on. They should realize now if they could cheat their own who would have campaigned, work hard, Mark, they should never be elected in Navy. So you don't have to wonder now because you see what they've done to their own. Mark, have a nice day. All right. Thank you, brother. Okay. Thank you very, very much. You have said all. That is what they say. You have said all. And I am grateful, very much grateful to you for your call and, you know, for your friendship all these years. I like to tease you about how much money you're making as a red cap. I know you guys are busy right now, and I'm very happy to hear that. The same situation is in Nevis. The hotels and restaurants are bursting at the seams. Very happy for that. Let's go back to the phones. We've lost that caller. Caller, please call back. 469-1616. Let's try this one. Good evening. Could you move away from your radio? Please. Night is high, level for me. Oh, night is right. The night is the night is going well. Thank you. Good thanks and good night to your listeners via the internet. Now I would like to just follow on something you you make some quote in your brief statement here, and I realize you outlining things about the the, the opposition party, considering to how they are behaving now. I would like to ask, are you? Feeling pleased in the context of the behavior moving towards the, the people needed. I'm not understanding your question. I asking you because you're ramping and how they, you, you're talking about they moving towards moving as the, 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 the filing petition for the election of just gone in even. And now see now they have done have the results as there have been two seats out of the five seats. You make a a a a a a a a a a a a thing about the federal election and the local election. But while I want to know, why is it that I can build a bridge together and work hand in hand for the betterment of these people instead of just a party alone? All right, well, um, everybody, I think, has a duty to try to work together. Um, sometimes that's possible. Sometimes it's not. Do you work together with everybody that you know? I work I work the best interest that we can build for one another. Okay. That is all. I and think. what if somebody disagrees with what you say? We, we, could, be, we, should, we could disagree and agree, but the most important thing is to also respect one another. That's the most important factor. And I realize you, you call them coming in who are supporters of your party, starting to your crap before they try to bring things to better, better men. It's the upbringing of Navy's people from the stupidness of the scene now in here. Even in the, in the federal election, is a, a call like that. You all need to grade all your people properly and stop that the people that are coming out of the way to shut in pure crap. All right. Okay. Bill, all right. Okay. Caller, thank you very much. Because, you know, when you start to characterize what other people are chatting, let me just leave it there. All right. Have a good night. I hope you, you know, take a chance and listen. Um, callers calling with an opinion just as you call in all the time with an opinion and matter of fact sometimes you call and you ask me what are you talking about tonight because you don't even know so my simple point to you is just as you're asking people to respect each other 
you have to respect people as well. And you're calling in the radio station on a big show, which has a big audience, so obviously you want your opinion to be heard. So only you are entitled to your opinion? So what if I were to tell you that you're chatting foolishness? Would I not be disrespecting your opinion? So we mustn't talk and say we want something and then we immediately demonstrate by our actions that we don't want the something that we say we want. Okay, caller? You want respect, respect people. Simple as that. The show provides a platform where you and others can call and give your opinion on a variety of matters. So let it not become a situation where you feel that your opinion is somehow superior to that of someone else. Okay? That is where respect starts. You give it, you get it. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Lost that caller, let's try someone else. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello? Yeah, good night again, Premier. Yes. I did not disrespect nobody, you know, so let me let it be heard, family, please. I did not. All I'm just saying, if your caller them is calling in, let them bring things that can bring development for Nevis, not trust You people. think you're bringing something right now which bring in development for Nevis? What is that, sir? Do you think you're bringing something now that is do bringing development yes, for Nevis? If, 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 if I know bring something, I, I would have come here and do the same chastising, but I'm making sure that we can have better cardinal for the safety net of the young ones. We can be, you say, that way, a section of your audience, you know, we, internationally. So remember, these young people and all, you know, poor people who are listening. So you yeah, have to know how I've been in the world to the, the young ones, them too. What about that? Mm. All right. Okay. That is all I'm asking for. All right, good. So you see, and 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 where we are going forward, we got to be cautious how we use the things them to to develop to our young ones. Them anyway, for the premier, I work for the best for the future and because if this is the way you are looking at, it's not going to be good. Bless and love. All right, okay. I I have no idea, caller, what you mean by saying that because you are being given an opportunity just like every other caller who wishes to exercise his or her right is being given an opportunity to call in and share their views i don't know how things are going that this suggests to you that things are not going right we had an election the election is over the nrp has decided they're going to go to court that is their right what we're debating is with the merits or otherwise of the going to court do they have a case have the petition been properly filed what in all of that in your mu mind tells you that we're going in the wrong direction but you have an opinion and if that is your opinion that is your opinion i don't have to agree with you but i respect your right to have it just don't call in and characterize other people's opinion in a pejorative way because i'm pretty sure that a lot of people out there might view your opinions in similar fashion let's go back to the phones good evening you're on the mark hello good night good night yes good evening you're on the air oh hey, good night Mark. Yes, you're on the air. Go ahead, okay, please. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, good night, good night. Uh, the, uh, Mark, this is Alistair. Yes, Alistair, I, how are you? I called your phone sometime, but I didn't get it. So, so um, sympathy to you and the rest of the family. You know, we are coming from Scarborough and David is up in Scarborough and, and so on. And so, I want, just wanted to, you know, show my solidarity with the family. Thank you very so, much, Alistair. Um, um, my condolences to you and and um, um, Helen them and Joan and he, jo, jo Lewis the other day he told me he, he didn't know me he didn't know you? <laughs> I had to tell him who I be and then he said oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, you know we grew up here together and we, we know each other very well and so I just wanted to to say um, uh, my condolences to his family Thank you very much, Alistair. I really appreciate it. All right. All the best. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Yeah. All right. As my former neighbor and the man who cooked the best cornmeal porridge in Nevis, Alistair. <laughs> what, what, what a life we've had, Alistair. What, what a life we've had, you know. We just have to give God thanks for us still being here. Grateful for life and grateful for all the lessons that we've been taught. But Alistair used to take very good care of me and my siblings when we were children in Hanley's Road, up Scarborough. And I, as I say, he used to make, I don't know if he could still make it, but he used to make good corn pop, as they call it then. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. 
Yes, good evening, my premier. Good, good evening to you. Spring. Sympathy greetings going out to the Berry family. I think we are some kind of a family. Mm. When I was growing up, I met some of the, the little girls and so forth in that family. Okay, let me just um, read a scripture here from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by thee, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at night. Good night. And God bless you and Thank you very, very much. Thank you for that beautiful scripture. Good night to Mr. Evelyn. <laughs> I'm sure he's listening. Yeah, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. God bless you. We have uh, 25 minutes left to the hour of 10 o'clock. Remember, at 10 o'clock, the show comes to an end. And so we're taking your calls. 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello. 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 Good evening. Could you move away from your radio, please? Could you move away from your radio, please? Okay, call us please when you're calling. Okay, we've been saying this for years. If you're calling and you get through, please move away from the radio or the computer. Listen to your phone. I'll be talking to you on the phone. That will prevent us from losing time with all this noise in the background. Okay, so when you're calling, move away. Talk to me on the phone. You're on the air. We're listening to you. The world is listening to you. Let's try again. Good evening. You're on the mark. Good evening. Good on evening. Mark, get set, go. Yes. How are you, sir? I'm well, thank you. All right. This is a friend of yours from St. Kitts. And I know the voice well. Happy New Year. <laughs> thank you. Same to you. Yes. And belated birthday greetings. Thank you very much. All right. Um, sometime this week, Tuesday, I think it was, the lead of the NRP was on Freedom FM in St. Kitts, and she spent quite a period of her time speaking about the, the airport deal, you know, what needs to be done, what don't need to be done, why people is, need we should have, need people must have a say in what's going on up there, and things of that nature. But she it eventually turned around to talk about, um, kind of implying that really they didn't have to spend any money in the airport, what you could really do is build a link between St. Kitts and Nevis, a bridge or cars or whatever. And eventually said, oh, I don't know how we should build a tunnel between St. Kitts and Nevis. So I, I immediately called in to to the good lady to advise her, well, that we live in an earthquake zone, you know, and I don't believe that a tunnel would be a good ex a good prospect between St. Kitts and Nevis because the risk to, you know, cracks and that sort of thing. And leakage of water into the tunnel and probably cause of death depending on what's going on because as I reminded her that um, James Town was not too far away from any kind of linkage across the narrows um, and uh, she, she didn't seem very impressed by that at all I got to say if, if you had to build any state structure with these things and leave this I mean, in case uh, in a, speaking specifically about a tunnel you know, it should not be built out of concrete. You probably have to build out of plastic, something that is flexible mm. to accommodate the environment, the earthquake environment in which we live. Uh, but she wasn't taking on me and my stupidness at all as far as she was concerned. I was chatting rubbish. Mm. So it does seem as though she, when she sets her mind on something, she stays there and to hell with the rest of the world. Well, that is what is on display with her and her junior and her deputy right now. <laughs> her and her deputy, I mean, she's saying 
to hell with the deputy and the deputy is saying to hell with her. That really is what is going on right yeah, now. Yeah, I just said that to, to, to con confirm what you're saying, you mm -hmm. know, that um, once her mind is set, that is it. It's a tunnel or nothing else, to hell with it. Mm -hmm. Whether we sing gospel, if I, I hate to be going to Charlestown and find that water leaking in and I have to be diving like hell going across the, 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 the tunnel to leave us. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it would be a risk. We know that. Well, yes. um, you know, I, 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 I suspect that we're going to have various things being said, but five years is uh, quite a bit of time. And if the Lord is good enough to give us strength, we'll be here five years from now. And the people have an opportunity again. I don't know if this current crop of NRP politicians, um, because most of them are going to be pretty close to 70 yeah. by the time we come around. So whether they'll have that in them to go again, I don't know. But I really feel that some of these realize that this was really the only opportunity that they would have had. And this is why they're not giving up. Yeah, and I suppose if people should learn to and get up and analyze and say, well, we almost made a mistake here. Mm -hmm. um, let's not make a mistake five years from mm -hmm. now. Well, well, the people are seeing it very clearly. <laughs> I, uh, uh, someone said to me, could you imagine if what we're seeing on display here had been in government, not in opposition, but in government? I know. It would have been a disaster on the island of Nevis. Right, where you would have no agreement on anything, you would have this public fighting in this way, um, and and the, the island would really become ungovernable. We would we would probably have had to go back to the polls right away. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. That is that is the reality, you know. So we'd have to send over the defence force to <laughs> stabilise things in Nevis. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. But, you know, <laughs> okay, have, have a see. good night, man. You take good care. <laughs> All right. <laughs> God bless and thanks for the call. All right, we have 22 minutes left. We're taking your calls. 869-469-1616 and 1700. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Could you move away from your computer or your radio, Hello, please? Hello, Matt. Could you move away from the computer or the radio, please? Yeah, Matt. Okay, Matt, what I just wanted to... Um, uh, um, I just want the public amigos to know that Curtis Williams had died. Um, guys like Mike Isaac would have known her. She's from Brooklyn. So Ken and the other guy, Sterling. And um, she died in New York for a week and a half ago. And she's been buried in New York. But we have a live streaming in Brooklyn at the Baptist Church Friday. Okay. The 3rd of uh, February. What's the name so of the person? I to know that. Uh, loving lady, Curtis Williams. Curtis from, Williams. Uh, Brooklyn. Okay. And she uh, passed away. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much, and please accept my condolences and to the entire family. I can't say no the individual who you're speaking of, but certainly uh, I would extend my condolences yeah, to the family. Look, those guys will not curse. Uh, you know, look, look at uh, convicting. All right. Convicting. Okay, caller. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Then. Thank, Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. We have 20 minutes to the hour of 10 o'clock. We're taking your calls at 869-469-1616 and 1700. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Mark, you know, since I'm do good, Facebook not got nothing to tell about me. <laughs> Somebody call in and tell me that's how they got this piece of gabardine clap. Me could make a skirt, but I don't know about this show yet. All right, no problem. Uh, I, I, I gonna, yes. I gonna yes. connect. I gonna connect you with the man who got some home. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank all right. You. Good. Take They're good care. They are gonna be too big for me. Well, you could you could take them in. Uh, this show. Yeah. This show. <laughs> yeah, you could take in the show. <laughs> 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 take care. Yeah. 
Alright. Okay. Yeah. We are taking your calls, ladies and gentlemen. 869 469 1616 and 1700. Lots of mirth and merriment, a lot of laughter. Uh, even as we discuss serious issues, this show is a show where people use it as a platform for a variety of reasons to get out information, to have discussions about issues that are topical, and uh, really to keep people connected to this beautiful island of Nevis, this land of our birth. And uh, I am so fortunate to have been born here and to call this island home. And I know others are equally, equally passionate about this island. Let's go back to the phones. Okay, we've lost that caller. Caller, please, if you can call back, 469-1616 and 469-1700. Those are the numbers to call. I was mentioning earlier that we, the island right now is a buzz, that the restaurants and hotels are doing very well. We are very very uh, happy about that. Some are saying that it's the best season that they've had since 2018 and it means therefore it is the best season in five years. We know that we had the ravages of COVID which struck in 2020 um, and uh, people seem to have quite a resurgence and I'm very happy for that. I'm asking of course our taxi drivers and hot hotel workers and restaurant workers to, to really do the best they can to maximize what they can earn, but also, of course, to continue to give that excellent hospitality for which Nevis is known. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello. Well, Mark, these people don't know to take in shoes. <laughs> we could take in shoes, man. What happened to you? You stuff, you stuff newspaper up in them, does it? Where you take them in? Well, so, but suppose the shoe too wide. What are you going to do? Yeah, but the newspaper can take care of that. The newspaper are going to take care of it too? Sure. I hear you. So what else is going on? Uh, okay, you're gone. Uh, Sixteen minutes to the hour of ten o'clock. We're watching the clock tick by and we're taking your calls. We have time, ample time, to take some more calls and so we're inviting you to be a part of this show. And let's go straight to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello? Hello? Co caller? Hello? Okay, this caller doesn't want to talk to us. Callers, again, I'm asking you, please, when you call the radio station and you get on the air, listen to the telephone. You'll hear my voice on the phone saying, hello, you're on the air, and then you speak. It's a telephone conversation. Do not listen to your radio or your internet. In fact, you could shut that off because it interferes with what we get here. So I'm asking you, when you call in, you get an answer, listen to the phone and speak into the phone. Let me try again. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Go ahead. Good evening, Mark. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. I'm calling for number five. I'm starting to let you know you can have my representative because I realize you both have something in common. You both are liars. And you both came in on winning seat, and you both are destroyers. Have a good night. Well, caller, I wish you'd use your own voice so we could actually hear what you're saying, because you're just calling and you wasted your little money from Flo, because not a soul understand what you're saying. So if you can call back, use your real voice. This is a show where all shades of public opinion uh, are accepted and, in fact, welcomed. So if you have something to say, just call and say so. And you don't need to involve me. If you call in and you have something to say about, what do you say, your representative from number five, uh, call in and say so. You don't need to try to disguise your voice and sound so silly. Caller. So please, call in, say what you have to say. This is a grown up show for grown up people, and you're in prime time radio. Because all around the world now, people ask him, what foolishness is that? So, call back in, caller. 469 1616, 469 1700. Use your real voice and make your point. Be passionate about it, but don't mix me in an happy confusion, please. Because you see no confusion in CCM, right? That's the party that I lead. CCM has real leadership. Team members working together. Okay? We don't have anybody who's engaged in any WrestleMania. So, just so you understand that. But if you're going to call, let's treat the show with some level of seriousness. Don't bother waste your money. Call flow the charger by the second. Do we have anybody holding? Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Matt, just kill what I think it. 
Lord of mercy. Girl. One just done. All right. Okay, we don't have the information, and I'm, I'm, you know, call out. We always have to be sensitive about these matters, so I, I am hopeful that that is not the case. Um, it's really sad that we've started off the the year. It seems in a difficult way. We always hear about these tragedies, and I'm praying and hoping that we can break the back of this, um, you know, and these perpetrators can be put put behind bars and put behind bars for a very long time because this this activity really has to cease it really has to stop and the, the country has gone through this trauma we've come back now we're at a point where uh, homicides were at an all-time low and we really need to keep it that way and we again appealing to our young people because disproportionately these young people who are losing their lives and young people engage in this kind of activity we're begging you find another way find another way too many tears have been shed in this country find another way let's go back to the phones good evening you're on the mark hello hey Mark. yes you're on the ear go ahead what's here what's here you are getting to me involved right you know she this back up you tell me if you have something to tell you and I tell I tell him to come up the phone, right? But he said, he didn't talk about the phone. He said, she'll listen. But watch her. Hey, Volin. He said, he said, you're bringing He said, he said. So, caller, if you want to talk to Volin, call Volin, no? And talk to her, okay? I'll go down by the shop and talk to Volin. If you say she listening, Volin, good night. God bless you. I hope things with you are good. Okay, caller, uh, you know, this show, this show should be used for issues that are of public importance. Now, there's a conduit or medium for you to talk to a pretty lady in town called Volin. So, go down by Volin and tell her what you have to say. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Yes, good evening, my premier, the Louis and Brown here. Good evening to you. All the way from St. Croix, man. Big up yourself. Stay strong. How are you, brother? I cool and belated birthday to you. Mind coming up next Tuesday, man. What? Well, happy birthday when it comes. Yeah, and I want to say happy birthday to the Wildwind family as well. Out of Brown Hill, man. And all everybody up there. Stay strong, man. This game is all the way. This game all the way. So you hang in there, brother. Thank you very much. Yeah, respect to you. All the best. All right. Good, good to hear that voice always, you know, Brown, Brown Hillian. Uh, when you know Brown Hill people, they, they're proud, they stand tall, they do well wherever they go. You mentioned the Walwyn family, good night to you, the Walwyn clan right there on the hill. I trust and hope that you all are doing well. Let's go back to the phones, we have someone, 10 minutes to go, 469-1616, 469-1700. Those are the numbers to call, and we're hopeful that we can have a few more calls before we call it a night this evening. It has been a good show, I use the opportunity to try and explain what we're dealing with in terms of this cyber attack on the Nevis Island Administration and our IT platform. I told you a bit about the election petitions and what was afoot. We now have a date of February 15th that the judge has fixed for the hearing of these strikeout applications. If the judge grants those strikeout applications and that is it, it means the election petitions come to an end and uh, we will have to see what the electorate says in another five years or whenever the next election is going to come. If the judge does not grant the strikeout applications, then it suggests that the petitions will proceed and uh, it means therefore that we'll have a trial of the petitions at some point in the future. And so that is pretty much where we are, but we know on the 15th we will have a very important hearing. The judge has indicated that it will be uh, an in-person hearing so that I will have to go to court and Mr. Brand will have to go to court and those who have brought the petitions will have to go to court as well and we'll see. Uh, I also updated that all the respondents, that is all the people who have been named in the litigation, they have all filed strikeout applications. So all of them are saying the same thing, that the petitions are bad in law or and or the petitions were not perfected and or the petitions were filed out of time and in any event the petitions do not disclose 
any grounds upon which a petition can be brought. So that is the position, and we will obviously hear what the judge finds sometime either on the 15th or thereafter. And then we will know where we go. Uh, we feel very confident, based on the law, that these petitions are incurable, they're palpably bad, hopelessly bad, and as a consequence, they ought to be struck out. But we will, of course, have to hear what the judge has to say on the matter. But we feel, based on the law, that we are on very good grounds. And for those who are out there making a big song and dance, talking about technicality, technicalities only arise when lawyers don't do what they're supposed to do. And I said so very clearly. Technicalities only arise when lawyers do not do their job. They don't do what they're supposed to. And that sometimes happens when you go to a foot doctor, say you have neck pain, you have eye pain, or you have head pain, and you go to a foot doctor, that's what happens. People must know what their role is. People must know what they're capable of doing. And if they're not capable, they say, don't go there. As I said, they could have come to me and I would have advised them to leave these matters alone and to go sit down, as the old people would say. It's a lot of advice that we take, you know, here in Nevis, that we could take. A lot of advice that our elderly parents gave to us and the people in the neighborhood gave to us. And that's the way it works, you know. I mean, I grew up in a neighborhood there. You know, you had people like, like um, Floris William and Luther William. You had a Maisie Bartley. When Maisie watched you, Maisie said, boy, go be a yourself, go sit down. You know, that's, 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 you know, that's a good advice, good advice. And that's the kind of thing that we really need to take heed of and take account of and not continue this spectacle because that's really what it is. And while that is going on in the court, you have another public spectacle out there, chaos and confusion out there with the NRP for all the world to see, demonstrating they're not ready for this. This isn't for them. They say in some nigger house, confusion house, problem house situation, this is not about chaos and confusion. This should be about people. Governing for people, representing people with dignity, representing people with a caring heart. And if you have the right approach, people will gravitate to you because people understand that you put them first. That is why the CCM memo, the CCM ethos, the CCM momentum, the CCM rule of thumb, whatever you want to call it, slogan, way of life is putting our people first. We've always said people matter most. And that captures the ethos of us as a party. People matter most. You have to put people at the epicenter of what you do. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello, good evening, Mr. Bradley. This is Mr. Paris. I'm calling on behalf of the Charlestown Secondary School. I just want the public to be aware of the big event the big showdown that's happening on Sunday coming 5th February at the Mondo Track or the Nevis Atlet Stadium at 2 p.m. sharp under the patronage of Mr. Lester Blackett. The CSS will be having its annual sports day. And for those of you who don't know, this is where the Lions roar for sure from door to door. And we would have also just placed the third in the giant mark relay competition and so we are putting on our sports day we are red gold green blue will be coming up against uh, one another we have people like mr leon thompson record holder in the 200 meters from last year we have kaya dow new on the block we have jaim robinson kaimani mm -hmm. newton we have um people like the famous bolo everybody looks forward to the <laughs> bolo and we have Anaira Will, we have people like Ryan, Malachi, Janicia Williams, who would have traveled overseas recently. We have Taisha Taylor. Lots of outstanding athletes to show you what they have and to give you just a taste of what CSS is. Okay, and so we want to encourage everybody to come on out. It's... Uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. again Sunday. We have inside parking. If you w still want to sponsor a race, probably you would have run that race when you used to go to school. Feel free. It's $50 per race. Come on board. Have fun. 
this Sunday, 2 p.m. sharp. See you there once again. Yes, that's where the lions roar for sure from door to door. If you were on red, come out and black red, me If you were on gold, <laughs> come out and do your thing. Yeah, make your noise. Green, same thing. Gold, yes. Come up. Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. sharp, the place to be. Nevis Athletic Stadium. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. And what an advertisement. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure people come up. But, you know, you know I, I have one complaint. You say if you're on red, if you're on gold, if you're on green. Who am to blue? They don't have blue house anymore? Oh, uh, um, my, my son happened to be on blue. Well, so you I forget your son? I'm a red house fan, sir. But so, just in case, I would have missed up with blue, as you said. <laughs> blue houses. Come on. <laughs> if you used to be on blue, you're on blue. Come out, make some noise for your blue. I used to be on Red House, by the way. Oh, very good, sir. Yeah, yes, but yes, yes. The, in the I days, have... I don't know. Tell me if it's still the case. Because at CSS, I couldn't run, I couldn't jump, I couldn't do anything athletic. But they said if you did good in academics, you could contribute to your to your um, house. They still have that rule? But no, we, do, we, don't, we don't have that uh, right now. No? No. So you see, no. that's the only way I used to give you, a couple you points. You can come and make your noise. As I tell my Red House, not everybody will be able to run. But whatever it is you can do, just come out and do it to the best of your ability. All right. So all if right. you're good at making noise, come make, make noise. a noise. If you're good at dressing up, put on your collar and dress up. And come. Do all what right. you're good at. All right. I hear you. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Good. Have a Thank you. Thank you very much. I've just been sent a note here um, to send some condolences to Coretta Maloney on the loss of her son in St. Kitts. Coretta, if you listen, uh, we want to extend condolences to you. Your dear friend Tasha in New York is asking me to send condolences to you. And I am truly sorry for what has happened with you um, in relation to the loss of your son in such terrible circumstances. But I pray and hope that God will comfort you and the family in your time of difficulty. We have only about two minutes left as we bring our show to a close. We want to say um, that this has been a good show. It's unfortunate that uh, my phone is going off here now with um, issues of, of yet some further difficulties on St. Kitts, but that will be a matter for another time, no doubt. I'm just continuing to appeal to our people to act responsibly to our young people in particular, to put down the guns and put down the knife and put away the anger. I am not understanding why we are so angry with each other. We can disagree. In a democracy, in life, you'll have disagreements, but how you resolve them is really what is most important. And so as we end our show for tonight, I want to appeal to our people to continue to do what is right to continue to be responsible citizens and to continue to seek to respect each other. And by so doing, we hope to build a better Nevis, a better federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. The ban is striking up. It means, therefore, that we have to go. We have, on my clock, two minutes to go, but the clock on the wall is what guides us, and that clock on the wall is saying it's 10 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for those who have called, those who are part of this show. I think this show is an important institution now in the country where we exchange ideas, we have an opportunity to engage with each other. And I want you to take up your phones on that Wednesday each week and call in and share your views. Be a part of what you want to see and hear in our country, what you want to discuss, but also the change that we want to see. We are constantly seeking to do better. And that is why I come here on Wednesday, because I want to hear from you. I want to engage with you. I want to have your ideas and so do better. That ultimately is what we must all seek to do. So I want to thank you for being a part of the show. This show is rebroadcast tomorrow, right here on Viewing Radio at 1 p.m. And so you have another opportunity to listen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. For those of you in North America, stay warm. And for those of you right here in Nevis, stay warm because it's very cold here at nights. That's our show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. God bless you.
views and opinions expressed on the preceding program were solely those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Nevis Broadcasting Company Limited or its advertisers.